Hello, I'm Rebecca from Berry's Wine School. We're going to have a great time today. We're going to look at Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay, two of the most famous white grape varieties. And I think the best way we can learn about each one is to compare and contrast them. We've got a great selection at Berry's. So we've got two Sauvignon Blancs for you, a really exuberant one from New Zealand, and then one that's much more subtle from the Loire Valley in France. So we have those two here. Now let me tell you, Sauvignon Blanc loves a cool climate. That's why it does so well in New Zealand and why it does so well in the Loire Valley. And as a result of these cool climates, you'll notice the wines are really a very pale color. Now let's just see what we've got in the nose of the New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. If I wake it up a little bit, put some air in the glass, it really releases the pungent aromas Wow, they're really pungent. What am I getting there? Lots of kiwi. It sounds a bit corny, but yes, you can get that rich kiwi fruit on a New Zealand. A little bit of nettle, a bit of freshly mown hay, perhaps a little bit of gooseberry. And in the wine trade, they like to say cat's pee as well. On the taste. Mmm. This is really delicious. Because it grows in the cool climate, it's very high in acidity. That's because the grapes don't want to get too ripe. They retain that high acidity. So I've got all this tingling on the sides of my tongue. You can hear I'm mouth-watering. I can't finish my sentence. It's so full of acidity. That's the secret of Sauvignon Blanc. It's very refreshing. The acidity is its backbone. It is its keynote. Now let's look at the one in the Loire Valley. Quite a different climate, a very continental climate in the Loire Valley. Now, very interesting, a completely different nose here. The same grape variety, but a different climate altogether. Much more subtle, not nearly as pungent. You really have to, it's almost like you're listening to the wine. Now, that smell it reminds me of the earth. It reminds me of the chalky soils. There's a little bit of smokiness there too. That's what I would describe as a mineral smell in wine. Minerality, it's one of my favorite wines. It's very useful to use when the wine's not intensely fruity. And that's the secret of the subtlety of this Loire Sauvignon. Let's try it on the palate. That's fantastic. That really is, it's a much more subtle flavor. It's a much more subtle experience on the palate. I've still got the mouth watering. I've still got the tingling on the sides of the tongue, but there is a much, I know it sounds a bit corny, but it's almost tasting like pebbles. You know, I don't go around tasting pebbles, but it's how you imagine pebbles to taste. Um, there's no language for taste in, in wine. There's no language for smell. It's all by association. Moving on to Chardonnay, can you see that these are much richer in color than the Sauvignon Blanc? A good comparison there. Another great comparison is Chardonnay is like a blank canvas. It grows all over the wine world. It can grow in a cool climate. It can equally grow in a really hot uh, climate. And this really influences the Chardonnay. So, you know, you've heard of that group ABC, I'm an ABC, I'll drink anything but Chardonnay. And what I like to say to those people is, well, which kind of Chardonnay don't you like? Because there's hundreds of different kinds, because there's hundreds of different climates, hundreds of different wine growers who love to grow it, who love to make it into wine. And also there's lots of different price points. You can pay $2.99 uh, for a Chardonnay. You can pay hundreds, hundreds of pounds for a Chardonnay. Now this first one, I've chosen for us. Again, it's from France. It's from an area, Burgundy. It's a little bit further south than the Loire Valley, so that means it's a little warmer. When you've got more sunshine, you're going to get greater richness in the grape because it ripens more. Oh, lovely buttery flavors. A hint of vanilla. What's that telling us? It's had a little bit of new oak treatment on the palate. Mmm, that's very elegant, very elegant indeed. There's this lovely slow descent of buttery mineral flavors, again reflecting that subtle uh, climate that we get in France, particularly in Burgundy. 
Let's contrast it with this fantastic wine from Ridge in California. Look how this is a really golden color. Wow, put your nose in there and it's a much more intense aroma. Why? Because it's a much hotter climate in California. There's distinct toasty notes. You know when they make these new oak barrels, they toast the inside of the barrel to get the shape and that toast comes into the wine. You also get vanilla flavors coming into the wine uh, because you find vanilla in oak. And then that's all mixed with rich buttery flavors of Chardonnay in this hot climate and tropical notes, tropical notes of pineapple, uh, mango. I can't wait to taste this. Wow, that's a meal in itself. It's a really full bodied wine. I'm getting a lot of warmth at the back of the throat mixed in with the balance. That's telling me it came from a very hot climate and it's probably got an alcohol level of around 14 and a half percent. Now, all of these wines, as you can see, we've put some smoked salmon here and we thought it would be fun to introduce an idea of food and wine matching for you to try at home. Think about it. Smoked salmon is an oily fish. It's got quite strong flavors and it's got quite distinct aromas and of course it's been treated in oak. So we could take our cool climate wines which are particularly high in acidity and see how that cuts through the oiliness of the fish. Maybe you'll really enjoy that particular contrast. Alternatively we can take our rich buttery Chardonnays which have had a little bit of oak treatment which really mirrors the rich flavors of the salmon and the oak flavors of the salmon. I'm trying to say there are no distinct rules. One day you might feel like contrasting the richness of the salmon with acidity. Another day you might feel like harmonizing the flavors of the salmon with the flavors of the wine. It's all about playing around with the key characteristics of the wine and the key characteristics of the food. Basically, there are no hard and fast rules. Enjoy experimenting, learning all about Chardonnay, learning all about Sauvignon Blanc, comparing and contrasting. And join me next time, we're going to look at Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot. Enjoy.